you know, the market's been hypnotized by this notion of a Fed pivot, but you've been busy trying to look through it and argue that even if one comes, sure, it could lead to rallies, but it's going to lead the market to think about longer term issues that the Fed really can't do anything about. Well, that's right. I mean, we're, we're very focused now on the path of earnings, right? This is the second part of the fire and ice narrative. And, you know, while the Fed is still critically important to asset markets, you know, we don't think there's an imminent pivot coming anytime soon uh, in terms of like a true pivot where they not only pause, but really start cutting rates. We think that will come when it becomes apparent that we're either in a recession or there's some sort of, you know, stress in the financial markets that the Fed has to react to. So in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on what we do best, which is forecasting earnings a year out. And on that score, unfortunately, you know, our models are, are pretty pessimistic, right? That the, that the forward earnings estimates by the street are probably about 20 percent too high relative to what our models are saying. Now, we don't get everything right, of course, but directionally, that's a pretty big gap. And we, don't, we just don't think that's priced. So that, that's, that's how you know, we're, we're going to you know, focus on earnings season. Where are the opportunities, both on the long and the short side, because you know, there's still, there are probably a bunch of companies that have already lowered the bar enough, and those are your better tenants to be buying. Don't be looking to buy companies that haven't lowered the bar at all, because this is not going to be a situation where, you know, the average company avoids this downturn in earnings. It's going to be very broad from the way we see it. Right. We began the hour talking about this report on Intel's layoffs, and you did have a note Sunday arguing that companies will have to take more significant action on labor, i.e. layoffs. And you actually looked at uh, jolts and claims and some of the time lags there. Can you talk about what you think might be coming? Yeah, I mean, look, this is a really interesting uh, economic cycle, as you know. I mean, everything's happened in a very compressed manner. You know, we've called this the hotter but shorter cycle, and that, that's happening. But one other interesting aspect, Carl, as you know, is that, you know, companies have had a hard time finding employees because of the pandemic, the structural shortages in, in labor and headcount. And so what could happen is we may get a soft landing in jobs, meaning, you know, like, let's say we have a recession. We don't, we don't know the answer to that, but let's say we get one next year. Uh, we think it'll be mild, like from an unemployment standpoint, meaning unemployment only goes up maybe a couple hundred basis points or maybe two, three hundred, which is pretty modest in economic terms. But, you know, from an earnings standpoint, that's actually a bad outcome. You know, one of the things about the U.S. equity market, the reason why it's done so well over the last 30 years is because companies are very good at cutting costs when they need to, and they're very efficient with that. And I'm not so sure they're going to be able to reduce headcount as aggressively as they have in the past, given this structural shortage. We're going to have to see how that plays out. But as far as our note goes, we think the process has started, meaning job openings have really come down. You guys were just talking about layoffs of some specific companies. We're seeing that, too. And eventually it will overwhelm. We will see negative payroll data at some point. We don't know if that's this year or next year or what time in next year, but we're going in that direction. And the question now is how deep will that be?